So I recently met someone and there's just something different about them. Something special, you know, we really connected, we really clicked and I've honestly never experienced that with anyone before. You know, it was so unique, someone who just really gets me and I gotta say, I think that they might be the one. You know, I think they might be my twin flame or my soulmate and maybe it's true. Maybe at birth, our soul is split in two and it is our purpose, our reason for being to find that other half and I think that I found that half. I found the one and I can't stop thinking about this person and whenever I do, I feel so warm and bubbly inside and filled with passion and purpose and I just can't get this person out of my head. It's, I can't stop thinking about this person, the one, the soulmate, the special one, my reason for being. You can relate, right? You, you know what I'm saying, right? The soulmate, the one. If you do relate, then wake up because you've just fallen into the one-itis trap. What is one-itis, you ask? One-itis is a scarcity-based mindset where you hypnotize yourself into this fantasy and you fixate on someone, project onto someone and convince yourself that this person is your purpose, your reason for being. No one could ever live up to them. They are perfection. And if you could just be with this person, all your problems would fade away. You would finally feel complete. You will finally feel whole. You know, that void inside you've been trying to fill. The reason it hasn't worked is you haven't found that person. And the more you think about them, the more your life has meaning, the more there is hope. That there is one-itis. And this is an extremely toxic mindset, a toxic trap to fall into. It's extremely unhealthy. It'll eat you up inside and extremely unattractive. It breeds neediness, clinginess, craving, and codependency. And it is so common, it's even pumped in the mainstream. Okay, one-itis, what is it? The one itis right the soulmate you just need to find your one if you relate in this video here we're going to really break down why this is so toxic why it's so bad and we're going to wake you up for good because this can happen with someone you haven't met or just briefly met it can also happen with someone you're in a relationship with and it can happen with someone whom you've broken up with you know, I hear this all the time. My ex, my ex, you know, no one lives up to my ex. I just really want to get my ex back. <laughs> my ex, you know, they're the one. I messed it up with the one. What am I going to do? How can I live my life now that I messed up my only shot? What? Okay, so lock in, click the subscribe button, click the little bell next to it if you haven't already, and get ready to wake up. You ready? Huh? You ready? So the first thing that you can do in order to take some of the charge out of this and to wake up is to distinguish between what is real and what isn't. Okay, facts versus stories. What are the facts about this person and what are the stories that you've made up or projected onto them that simply aren't real? Okay, I remember when I was younger in school, I'd have these crazy crushes on different girls that were in my class or in other classes where, let's just say we would, you know, cross paths in a hallway and just lock eyes for a second. And here's what would happen. Okay, this is how the virus of one-itis hijacks your mind. We'd cross paths, lock eyes for a brief second, and this is what the virus would say. Did you see that, Julian? You locked eyes. That was a little longer than the usual eye lock which rarely happens, let's be honest. You know what, that might be your special one. Really, my special one? Yes, you know those movies you watched with the soulmate? Seems based upon that eye-locking instance that that might be your soulmate. Really, I guess so, you know. And then what would happen? Your mind's hijacked and I would start painting out the entire picture of what our lives would be like together. You know what? You're right, <laughs> one-itis virus, that is the one. You know what, I never thought of it, but it would be so great to be with that person, to date that person. This is what it would feel like. This is what my friends would think. Oh, they would all be so impressed. What would her friends think? Oh, where would our first date be? And then we'd get married and what are our kids gonna be like? How many kids are we gonna have? And literally our entire lives together painted in my mind and I would just loop and think about this person every single day. I'd listen to emo music right at night like doo -doo -doo, there's a guy and a girl doo -doo -doo, and I'd be like that's the one just think about her oh yes I do miss her oh she is my purpose and I would just loop and loop every movie that I'd watch oh they fell in love I understand what it's like because I also have that with this person where we locked eyes okay now if you take this 
and you would talk to me back then. You're like, so, uh, you know, how's your love life? Oh, well, there's this person. I would tell you everything about them. You know, we have so much in common, shared values, et cetera, et cetera. Yet, if you sat me down and you're like, Julian, let's be honest here. What are the facts? What are the stories? And there's like two columns and I have to write it down. Facts are this. We spent, you know, one second locking eyes in the hallway at school. That's it. What are the stories? Years and years of just made up stories and projections onto that person. Okay. The real life facts was a second stories, years of what our lives would be like together. And just this seen it like that. Okay. And I'd recommend you do the same around this person. Just write down the facts, the stories. You will be shocked by how this oneitis virus will skew your reality to the point where you're living in this fantasy land. You've hypnotized yourself in this fantasy land. It happens with people you are dating. You might be in a relationship, few year relationship, and suddenly, you know, this person, I don't think I could ever do better than this person. I've never met anyone like this person. We've been together, it's so perfect, and this is what's going to happen in the future. And if I lose this person, oh, that would be the end of me. What if I lose this person? I can't lose this person. Or with someone who you did date, where looking back now in the relationship, instead of seeing things for how it was, you start painting the picture of, wow, my ex was so amazing. No one will ever live up to my ex. This is how they were, and this is what they did, and this is how it was, even though it might not have been like that. Okay, so once more, facts, stories, what's the difference, and just seeing what is real and what isn't will really help take the charge out and dehypnotize you, if you will, from this one night, it's trance, okay? This is the first thing you can do to really start waking up. The next step to really let land here is that this strategy does not work, okay? Although it may sound romantic and nice, you know, what's wrong with a soulmate, with two halves coming together? Here's what actually happens in terms of how it translates to the real world, okay? When it comes to someone who you didn't meet yet or briefly met, what's gonna happen? the more you start fantasizing and painting your lives together and just obsessing over the one and how special they are, you're going to get psyched out of your mind. Okay, if you take that example of me crossing paths with someone in the hallway, locking eyes, what's going to happen? The more I start thinking about that person, the more at home I start playing that music and just, oh, it'll be so nice when we're together. Oh, and it's gonna be like this and it's gonna feel like that. What happens when I do see that person again? Am I going to say hi to them? Of course not. I'm going to be way too psyched out. Oh, this is my big chance. Oh my gosh, here they are. It's just way too much pressure. And if I do, it's going to come off as really weird, needy, and creepy. Okay, the more you live in fantasy land, the needier and creepier and more desperate you become. Yeah, it sounds romantic. Oh, look at that. But how does it actually translate? Creepy, creepy, creepy. Okay, this strategy does not work. What about with someone who you are already in a relationship with? Okay, this happens. You might be two, three, four, five years in, and the more time you spend with that person, suddenly, the more you start thinking, wow, they really are something, you know? They're the one. If it doesn't work with them, it's all over. You know, they complete me. And what happens there, the more you venture off into fantasy land and convince yourself that they are this special being that completes you, your soulmate, the less love you will actually experience and the more that love will transition into attachment. Okay, fantasy land, one-itis in a relationship, you're not gonna experience love, you're going to experience attachment. Because what are you saying, what are you telling yourself with this whole soulmate idea that you by yourself alone aren't good enough? You're saying, me by myself, I'm incomplete, there's this void I need to fill, and this other person completes me. I am a half, they are a half, and together we are one. And that is extremely toxic. This will lead to attachment, as I mentioned, craving, not love, and unconscious manipulation. Why? Because there's going to be deep-rooted fear inside of you where, hey, if I lose this person, I'm incomplete again. I cannot lose them. Okay? It is a terrible and toxic mindset. Instead of, you complete me, what about I'm whole and complete, you are whole and complete, and together there's a certain synergy that happens, and that is called love. Okay, love isn't two halves coming together, it's two people who are whole and together there's that synergy called love. 
okay? And not just that, but guess what? The more you venture into fantasy land, the more pressure you're putting on your partner, which they can't live up to, and you're expecting them to be a certain way, to think a certain way, to feel a certain way, and not just that, but you're also drifting off away from reality to the point where there really is no real relationship. It's you in your fantasy land with your fantasy partner, not who you're actually with. Okay, that's what happens in a relationship. Now, what about after a breakup? Okay, this is so common. You experience a breakup, and because there's more scarcity, because you've now lost that person, that hijacks your mind, and you're going to start painting this crazy picture about, oh, my ex is so perfect. How do I get my ex back? And that becomes your purpose, and everyone you meet after that, you're comparing to your ex, and that there is the most toxic mindset as well. Why? Because everything you're now doing is in reaction to your ex, right? I'm meeting someone new and uh, I'm doing it to get over my ex. I'm meeting someone new and I'm trying to compare it to uh, how my ex was. And it's all about the ex and that'll keep that ex obsession alive for years and years and years. Some people never break free from that. So this one-itis can happen no matter where you find yourself. Okay, you get sucked into scarcity, you get sucked into thinking that there's only one person for you and that's it, and if you screw it up, you'll never find anyone else. That was your one shot, and once more, you gotta wake up, okay? This strategy does not work. That's the second thing to really let land here. The other crazy thing to realize with one-itis, and this is what makes it so addicting, is that one-itis will turn another person into your purpose. Okay, that's what happens. Instead of you having your own purpose, something you're inspired to do, to generate, to create, you shift that to, my purpose is this person. My purpose is my soulmate. My purpose is the one. This person is my reason for being. And guess what? Suddenly, instead of, say, going through the regular mundane nine to five, right, the routine, you wake up in the morning, ugh, another day, now you have something to live for. Now you have something that excites you, right? You wake up in the morning, oh, ooh, will I cross paths with that special person? Ooh, what will happen when I meet that special person? Oh, I'm gonna think about them when I'm at work today. Oh, and guess what? Now there's some excitement, there's some passion, right? Instead of boring, mundane, wake up, you know, go to work, go to sleep, now you can think about this. Think about this special soulmate, or, oh, my partner, and they're so special, or, oh, my ex, I'm just gonna think about my ex, and although it's not necessarily pleasant to think about, it's better than the boring mundaneness. Okay, it becomes a fake purpose, if you will. And this is terrible. Do not make another person your purpose. Instead, Realize your own purpose, whatever that is, not another person, and involve someone else. And this here will also make you much more attractive, okay? No one wants to be your purpose. That is just needy, clingy, wants more, a lot of pressure, a lot of projection, like live up to my purpose, and no one wants that, okay? People want to be involved in you doing something else that you love, right? Two people in a relationship, for example, should have their own purposes and involve each other. It's, hey, check this out. This is who I am. This is what I'm about. Oh, that's who you are. That's what you're about. Great. Awesome synergy versus, you know what? My reason for living is uh, you and my purpose is you. What about you? Everything about you. Terrible. Okay. So you can also catch one-itis with my purpose has become this person versus my true inspiration that I follow in life. And beyond that, number one, create external abundance, and number two, create internal abundance, okay? Understand that scarcity is really the breeding ground for one-itis. One-itis can only flourish if there is scarcity around. So the solution is to inject some abundance into your life, okay? On the external side, what does this mean? It means put yourself in more situations where there are opportunities to meet more people. Take more action, go say hi to more people, even online, meet more people, okay? External abundance is the first part of it, and the second part is internal abundance. And what does this mean? It means instead of coming at a relationship or coming at the world from a place of being incomplete inside, right? It's just me, I'm just a little half, and there's a void that I'm looking to fill. Guess what? Complete yourself. And this is done through letting go. 
okay? Dissolving the internal split that we're conditioned to create within ourselves, where there's the acceptable you, the you that you own, that you embody, but then there's the unacceptable you, right? Where you disown different aspects that you deem as unacceptable, different memories, different experiences, different emotions. What does that mean there? Reowning all of that. And when you do, through letting go, there is that internal abundance. You don't need anything out there to complete yourself. You didn't attach your self-worth to someone else. And you can finally enter a relationship from a place of reality and a healthy foundation of abundance. Okay, so once more, create external abundance. Go say hi to more people. Put yourself in situations where there are more possibilities to meet more people. The more external abundance, the less one-itis, and internally it is through letting go. And one last thing, by the way, if you're experiencing one-itis over an ex, and it was your very first relationship, then you must have blind faith that someone will live up to your ex and live up to even more than your ex was, okay? It may not seem like it now. You might be thinking, you know what? <sighs> no one will ever live up to my ex. That was the best. It's all downhill from now. B S. Okay, you hear it left and right, people who break up and they think it's all over and then they meet someone new, right? A new soulmate and it's way better. They're like, oh, thank gosh, I broke up with my ex because I wouldn't have met this person. Okay, this usually comes from a few references where you go through a breakup and you get the reference of realizing, oh, I actually did meet someone new. That helps keep that belief alive. But if it's your first relationship, then guess what? You got to take my word for it. You have to have blind faith that there will be better than this. Okay, but in order for you to see and give someone a chance to be better, you also need to let go of the obsession and clinginess to your ex. Okay, once more through external abundance and internal abundance. Okay, this is how you cure one-itis. Now, if you would like me to personally help you with this, make sure you click the link below this video and apply to join my private mentoring group where I teach people exactly how to let go of those things that run them, those things that cause one-itis, how to create that internal abundance and in turn that external abundance. So if this speaks to you, if you're ready, click the link below and work with me personally. Okay, I hope you enjoy this video and as always, until next time.